Joining us right now to get into the Commanders game against the Bengals is our pal Scott Abraham, sports director and anchor for ABC7. Scott, what has it been like this week? Has, has the team had like an optimistic vibe? Everything feels better after a win, right? I mean, I know it was ugly. It wasn't pretty against the New York Giants, but a win is a win, and they're 1-1, one and, one, and it's a great opportunity uh, for a lot of guys that have never played on Monday Night Football, plenty of rookies to kind of get that national spotlight, including quarterback Jaden Daniels, that former LSU quarterback matchup with Burrow and Daniels. So there's a lot of excitement because – uh, you got a one-on-one football team against a very desperate football team in Cincinnati that's 0-2, a Bengals team that many believe would be uh, one of the good teams in the AFC. Scott, do you think that they're going to get the, the stubbing their toe in the red zone issues out of the way against the Bengals that haunted them throughout the game against the Giants when they just seemed close to scoring touchdowns, then they kept marching backwards due to false starts, other penalties. Uh, they just can't afford that on the road against – a desperate AFC opponent, as you mentioned. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, when we talk to the players during the week and after the game on Sunday against the Giants, uh, many told us that these mistakes were very correctable. Uh, Again, more communication, more reps, everybody learning each other, watching the film. So I think this is a good week of preparation, and I would expect a better red zone performance. And I would like to see – I know people – you know, and I'm one of them, don't want to see Jaden necessarily run the football. But when you get down there, what's wrong with the design quarterback run? Get him doing what he does best. Uh, you know, do do something where he's on the move. Um, you know, get, get those extra yards. You know, you don't want to be playing catch-up. And that's what happened with those penalties in the red zone. They got bogged down and they got in some longer situations on second and third down. So I think if they try to stay ahead of the sticks, especially in that red area, uh, they're going to be much, much better off than settling for field goals. Scott, you mentioned Jade in rushing. I think they're going to major in rushing again through two yeah. games. They're averaging 176.5 rushing yards per game. That's third best in the league. It keeps the Bengals' offense off the field. Yeah, It, it, it keeps, the deep, more importantly, the defense for the commanders off the field as well. Plus, the Bengals have some pretty significant injuries along that defensive line. I would expect a lot of rushing again, from the commanders tonight. You bring up a good point on the Bengals' defensive front. They got a couple of D tackles uh, that are out. One, I think Chris Jenkins is going to be actually playing with a club uh, with a thumb injury. So I think this is going to be a time of possession philosophy um, for the commanders. They don't want to necessarily speed up the tempo here with the Bengals' offense with Burrow and Jamar Chase. So you know what the bread and butter is for Washington, right, guys? It's the running game of the Austin Eckler and the Brian Robinson Jr. And you splice in a little Zach Ertz and Terry McLaurin, uh, that quick passing game. I think they're just going to try to grind it out, uh, win the trenches, uh, especially on the offensive side of the football. And Brian Robinson Jr. and Austin Eckler, they've shown that they're one of the most dynamic duos in the backfield in the NFL right now. So I think you got to stick to what's working. And uh, I think that's what the plan is going to be against the Bengals. Yeah, I happen to agree with you. I, I have to say, though, and we talked about it a little bit earlier, I have been frustrated with such a conservative approach passing. I get it, though. They need to maintain possession because the defense is so mediocre. You know, I, I don't know if you saw the stat. You may have, but 38% of their passes have been beh- to receivers have been behind the line of scrimmage, which was like way past everybody else. The average is like 11%. Is that part of the equation why they're doing that? Or is it more to just slow roll Jaden and just yeah. get him comfortable in his first, you know, five or six weeks in the league? EB, uh, your latter point is my belief. I think having a rookie quarterback in Jaden Daniels, you got to kind of crawl before you walk, walk before you run, that type of situation. This is a process for Jaden Daniels. And you look at his stats, no turnovers, guys. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's great. Rookie quarterback, you want to be smart with the football, no fumbles, no interceptions. That's, that's progress. And I think, you know, little by little, they're going to take those training wheels off and, and take some more shots. But I don't know if it really makes sense in this type of a situation where you have a potent offense of the Bengals and you have a secondary here in Washington that's proven through two games. They can't handle a wide receiver one. Mike Evans, and then Malik Neighbors totally torched them. So I'm very concerned when the Bengals have the football with Burrow 
and Jamar Chase against that secondary because what I've seen from this Washington secondary through two games is, has shown me to believe like they're, they're not going to be able to handle that, that combination. So I think time of possession, grind it out, use the running game. I think that's the way to go tonight, guys. Well, yeah, I think we all agree on that game plan. In terms of defensively, you're right. We all have looked at what's happened the first couple of weeks and really yeah. what happened last year, and we know – that their secondary is suspect and they face some really good receivers. Do we expect Dan Quinn and Joe Witt to trick up the defense a little more to bring more pressure? Because they really haven't had consistent pressure through two games. You're darned if you do and you're darned if you don't because this is going to be a cat and mouse game in a sense where you bring the house against Joe Burrow and you don't get home, mm. you're in big trouble. <clears throat> but he's not, in terms of Burrow being a mobile quarterback, he's kind of on the lower range. So, you got to have to try to get pressure on them some, somehow. Through the first two weeks, they've gotten some pressure just with the front four, but they haven't gotten home. They haven't been able to corral those sacks. Mm -hmm. Will that change tonight? I don't know. They have no Cleveland Farrell. You're probably going to have Jamin Davis with some more reps. Uh, Javante Jean Baptiste. Uh, I know Coach Quinn has been very kind of impressed with his development and growth, so you're going to see him get some reps. How about Johnny Newton? He's probably going to have some more reps. He's going to be that rotational piece on the defensive line with John Allen and Deron Payne. The key is the defensive line, whether you're going to be bringing pressure or getting home with four, getting the pressure for the secondary to give them enough time to, to lock up the receivers. Everything's in sync with the secondary and the, and the defensive line. If the defensive line is not getting home and not getting pressure, the secondary – are basically dead man walking because they're just not good enough to hold up on an island on themselves. So uh, that's that's your your darned if you do, darned if you don't. So it's going to be very interesting to see how they attack Joe Burrow, knowing his skill set and knowing those receivers and Higgins and Jamar Chase. Well, Scott, one of those guys that really needs to get into attack mode is Dorrance Armstrong. He's got three tackles through two games, no sacks. He's one of the few guys that got an extended year deal. I think he signed a three year deal. Uh, during free agency uh, under Adam Peters, he got some decent money. Like that guy's got to start wreaking some havoc in the backfield. Is is there mounting pressure on Armstrong at this point? I mean, I think there's there's pressure on everybody on the D line because they just haven't gotten home. And Dorrance Armstrong was one of their big off season signings. He was supposed to come in here, and his one job is to sack the quarterback, pressure the quarterback. And he's not doing that right now. And I know he's disappointed. I know the whole D-line is disappointed where the offensive line, they're, they're doubling, you know, the Deron Paynes and Jonathan Allen saying, hey, D-N, we want you to beat us. And so far, they haven't. So the, the blueprint's out there right now. So don't be surprised if Cincinnati does the same thing the Giants did, double up on the D-line, on the D-tackles, and let the defensive edges, the edge rushers, try to get to Burrow. So far, they can't. Okay, so then if that doesn't work again, you're going to have to try to bring some pressure, uh, you know, cornerback blitz or, or linebackers and, and put some pressure. But again, if you don't get home, you got Joe Burrow back there uh, picking you apart. So it's going to be very – the key is can you get home with four? If you can't get home with four, that that's going to be problematic for this defense. Scotty, you saw what Kyron Williams of the Rams did to the Niners yesterday. You give him the ball and get the targets. He's going to do some damage. And – I, and I know it, it kind of depends on how long you have the ball. You have to have sustained drives. But I think Eckler needs even more targets in the passing game. He had four in week one for 52 yards. He had three in week two. So he went down by one for 47 yards. But so he's got seven targets for 100 yards. He's averaging 14 a catch. I think that number has to go up. They did give him the ball more in the running game last week from two to eight. But I still think Eckler, especially with the um, – you know, kind of the disappearance of the receivers in this offense. I think Eckler needs like seven, yeah. eight, nine targets. I really do. Boy, he's uh, he's got some juice, doesn't he? When he gets his hands on the football, watch out. He yeah, he can go. Out of the yeah. he, I mean, he's he's so exciting to watch. And and I wouldn't mind using B-Rob and Austin on the field at the same, same time many, many more times. You can line up Eckler anywhere, right? I mean, he's that Swiss Army knife. You can line him up in the slot. You can – line them up in the backfield. Uh, I'd love to see B-Rob and Austin Eckler on the field together much more. I know they have different formations and different sets, but clearly those two on the field together and their production, the proof is in, in the pudding so far. 
You mentioned the absence of the wide receivers. I think there's, there, there's going to be a concerted effort early on, guys, to get some touches to Terry McLaurin. Uh, that's just the first two weeks have not gone according to plan, whether it's uh, Jaden and Terry not on the same page or the bracket coverage on Terry from the opposing defense or locking them down. I think there's going to be some quick passing games, especially in the first quarter, first couple of drives, to get Terry involved into this offense, get his hands on the football. I think that's important because he's shown that when he gets his hand on the football and he gets into a rhythm, he can do some damage. So I'd love to see Terry get some extra targets, especially in the first half. And, Scott, I would expect Noah Brown has an expanded role too. He's only played in one game, but he definitely made an impact in that game with three catches for 56 yards. He leads commander's receivers by a wide margin and average per catch. Now, it's a very small sample size, but he's almost 19 yards per catch. I mean, that he looks like he's making a bid to become the number two wide out. And that's why they brought him in uh, during that, uh, you know, during training camp when he was cut by the Texans. He has that big playability, bigger sized receiver. And you saw what he did against the Giants come crunch time. He can, he can stretch the field and he can make those tough catches. So when you talk about, you know, picking your shots in terms of Jaden Daniels, that's, that's going to be the guy he's going to be looking for, Noah Brown, because he's proven it and they're developing that rapport. And you're right. He has those average yards per catches. That, that's your guy to kind of stretch the field. So in terms of Terry, in terms of Noah Brown, I'm going to throw another one out. Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz was tremendous against the Giants. There was a lot of questions with Zach Ertz. How much does he have left in the tank? Can he stay healthy? My goodness, he's been a great safety blanket for Jaden Daniels. And I think he's a crucial part of this offense. If you need a crucial third down conversion or – uh, pick up a seven, eight yard gain. Look for Zach Ertz. Look for an Austin Eckler. Uh, Ertz has been tremendous. We thought Sinnott was going to do something, and we really haven't yeah. seen anything from him so far. No, I mean, I think he was going to be plan B all along in terms of they were going to go in with a Zach Ertz, the veteran, have Zach Ertz mentor kind of build up. Welcome to the NFL, Ben Sinnott, and hopefully Zach Ertz stays healthy. I think that was the plan all along. And why, why mess with something that's working? Zach Ertz is doing a tremendous job. Senate will get, it, get, his, get his opportunities. But uh, right now, this is Zach Ertz, PE1. All right, so do you think they can pull this off? This is obviously a league of surprises. Yep. Um, you know, every year it seems like the commanders win a game that sort of on paper you think they don't have a good shot at. I mean, I don't know how any expert could pick Washington this week. Um, but obviously anything can happen, and sort of every year – Everything every week, something does. What, how realistic are their chances tonight? I mean, look, look what the Rams did yesterday against the 49ers. They, I mean, everybody basically said they had no shot. Um, you go down, the, go down the line, there were so many upsets for the first three weeks yeah. of the season. It's an unpredictable but, league, Scotty. As, as, I, as, as you guys know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a homer, and I, I really feel like this is a tough situation for Washington. I think this is a perfect storm for Cincinnati where – they are so desperate. They should have won that Kansas City game. They got embarrassed by the Patriots at week one in, at home. You have a Joe Burrow and you have a Jamar Chase licking their chops against this Washington secondary and Washington defense. That's shown they can't stop a wide receiver one this year. I, I think this is going to be a, a bad situation for Washington. I, I went 31-17 Cincy. Um, I, I think Cincinnati is going to get their first one of the season. It's just a tough situation for Washington, in my opinion, against a Bengals team that's supposed to be one of the better teams in the AFC, and they're, they're desperate. They can't go 0-3. Mm. All right, Scott, good stuff. It's Scott Abraham from ABC7. All right, guys, thanks. Yep, thank week. you, buddy. Thank you, Scott. Yep. Uh, we did put up our Junkies poll of the day, presented by Scotty's Vodka, Maryland made, super smooth, loved throughout the DMV. Who do you like tonight? Bengals, heavy favorite, seven-and-a-half-point favorite. I honestly want to hear from Skins fans that – think we got a realistic like you can there's in here's why abc not like i'm hoping and we could do it because there's always upsets i want you to tell me why? why they're gonna do it how are they gonna do it 